Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video for you talking all about the adrenals and adrenal fatigue and cortisol resistance and what all of that means. There's a little bit of noise. We just got some baby chicks. They're right over there in the other room and they're pretty noisy. So if you hear that, that's what that is. <laughs> so I have, um, I wanna keep this video short and sweet, but still give you a lot of information. So I'm going to start by uh, where is cortisol made? So cortisol is made in the adrenals. They, it, cortisol is a steroid, steroid hormone. Um, and essentially our body will produce cortisol during times of stress or times of like, like during when you have a cold or a flu. So it'll produce cortisol to help reduce inflammation in the body. Cortisol is very anti-inflammatory, which people don't really realize. I feel like cortisol gets a bad rap. Uh, everyone always thinks it's bad and you don't want too much cortisol and all that stuff. Now, there is a key word in the phrase I just said, you definitely don't want too much cortisol, but cortisol is good for you. Um, here is the difference between good cortisol and then when it gets problematic. So cortisol is great, it's anti-inflammatory. It inhibits something in the body called NF-kappa B, which is what is creating or driving inflammation. So when cortisol is produced, it inhibits NF-kappa B inflammation and keeps us healthy. Now, when we have moments of acute stress or moments where we are having a little bit of inflammation produced, our cortisol gets released, it quenches that inflammation, and we feel good. The problem is when you are chronically stressed. This is where it becomes a problem. When you are chronically stressed, your adrenals are chronically pumping out cortisol, which means there's a ton of cortisol circulating um, in our bloodstream. It's in a lot of cortisol in circulation. Now, normally we have receptors on our cells that when cortisol is released, these cells accept the cortisol, the cortisol then can um, be inhibitory towards inflammation. But when there's too much cortisol, similar to insulin, uh, our cells stop responding or receiving this cortisol. So just think about it if you're starving and somebody feeds you a ton of food. Once you're full, you're gonna say, stop feeding me, I'm not taking any more food. You're not gonna open your mouth for any more food. And the same thing goes with our body. If there's a ton of cortisol continuously being pumped out due to chronic inflammation, then you're going to end up with poor um, uh, cortisol receptor function. So our body will no longer take up the cortisol, which means this is a problem because now when you really need this, the body to take up the cortisol to reduce inflammation, it can no longer do that. So cortisol goes from being anti-inflammatory to being problematic. If you have too much of it, your body won't take it up, which means it can't reduce inflammation. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I have a post on Instagram about this that might explain things a little bit more if you're interested. Uh, it, my handle is at Marla's Healthy Life. So the other thing that I want to explain is when you have this cortisol that is being pumped out continuously due to chronic stress and your body no longer takes it up, you no longer get to benefit from this anti-inflammatory action of cortisol, which means your inflammation can go rampant in the body. It can ramp up a lot and you end up chronically inflamed and then you can end up with chronic inflammation, AKA autoimmune disorders. So adrenals are very much at the root cause of chronic inflammation. And when somebody comes to me, a client comes to me with a chronic inflammatory condition, the first thing we do is support the adrenals because they need to modulate how much cortisol they're pumping out to be able to have the cells finally re respond to the cortisol so that the cortisol can have its anti-inflammatory effect that it should be having. And almost everyone that comes to me with autoimmune has adrenal fatigue because the amount of stress in their life has triggered so much work on the adrenals and that's why they now end up with an autoimmune. So most people with chronic inflammation have chronic stress. So when someone comes to me with chronic stress, the first thing I do is we need to get your cortisol regulated. They always come to me saying, I have too much cortisol, cortisol is bad. Cortisol is not bad, we need it, and it has a lot of effects for us. It's just when there's too much of it, our body doesn't respond to it. Before I get to the supplements, I want to stress something here. Something that people do, and I always, when my clients come to me and tell me that they're on uh, steroids, I get um, so, 
I don't want to say frustrated. I don't get frustrated, but I, I just feel bad for them because I know so many people who are on steroids chronically and steroids do the exact same thing that chronic cortisol production or chronic stress does. Initially, just like cortisol, steroids are anti-inflammatory. So if you take them for an acute condition, for an acute period of time, they can be helpful. So if you have a burst of inflammation and you need to bring it down, doing steroids you know, for a couple days acutely absolutely has great benefits. It's very anti-inflammatory, just like cortisol. But if you are using steroids chronically, you are mimicking this chronic cortisol production in the body. So not only is your body producing a lot of cortisol, but the steroids are continuously mimicking cortisol in the body. And so you end up with poor cortisol reception. So, in, so steroids go from being anti-inflammatory when they're used acutely to being extremely inflammatory when they're used chronically. And they push you towards Th2 dominance and they flare up your autoimmune disorders when they're taken chronically. And it's really sad because I see so many people who have autoimmune skin conditions or things like that, you know, alopecia, uh, psoriasis, lupus, and they're on chronic steroid use. And what they don't realize is it's making matters so much worse, making them much more Th2 dominant, which means much more chronically inflamed and much more tissue destruction. So say no to chronic steroid use. Um, use it acutely if you need it for something very briefly, but it should not be done chronically. And the same thing with cortisol. You cannot have chronic stress or you will have you know, chronic inflammation. So deep breathing, hot Epsom salt baths, doing something once a week that brings you joy. It could be visiting with a friend. It could be paint night. It could be a hobby like woodworking. Whatever makes you happy, make time for it at least once a week. Read books. Uh, go for you know go walk go do exercises jog exercise reduces cortisol uh, so there's lots of things that you should do to keep you can hear the chickens there's lots of things that you should do to keep your inflammation low um, I think someone's at the door too so if you hear a doorbell that's why um, but lots of things you need to be doing in your um, day to day but also week to week routines to keep your stress low so that you do not have chronic stress or chronic cortisol production. So that's the first thing. I wanted to explain a little bit about how it works and some lifestyle things that you can do. I do a few things day to day to help with my, not supplements, which I'll get to shortly, but just things I can do non-supplementally to help manage my chronic stress. Because I feel like it's impossible to stop stress in our world today, especially if you're working, if you own your own business, if you're a mom, uh, you know, there's always, causes for stress. So what I like to do is rather than trying to get rid of the source of stress, although that's a good course of action and I do advise that, a better, a good thing to do is adapt the way or change the way your body adapts to stress, which we'll get into. But again, I practice deep breathing three times a day. I will do sit down for three different times a day and do at least, at least 10 deep, slow breaths in and exhale slowly. I exercise um, as much as I can. Some days I go without, you know, if I'm really busy, but I try to move my body when possible. Um, I will do hot baths, you know, twice a week with lots of Epsom salts. I diffuse essential oils around the house to keep me calm and grounded. In the summertime, I get as much sun as I can. I try to meet up with friends when possible. I will, you know, watch a movie that I enjoy. I will read a book. So I try to get as much self-care in as possible, which can lower my stress. And the same thing should be for you all as well. Okay, so what supplements can we take to adapt the way our body, to change the way or help our adrenals and our body adapt to stress? So I have a couple supplements that will do just that. They will help to not lower cortisol. We don't need to stop cortisol. We need to stop our chronic reaction to stress, which is then when cortisol gets produced. So what we want to do is fix the way our adrenals are functioning. And by doing that, cortisol naturally will come down in the body and then it'll only be released when we need it so then our cells can respond to it so the first thing are adaptogens no brainer there i'll list my favorite ones that have had the most clinical studies and that have seemed to work the best number one top favorite is ashwagandha ashwagandha is my favorite i take the one from douglas labs i will link all the supplements down below ashwagandha is one of my favorites it helps the adrenals adapt to stress so well but it also supports the thyroid i love it so much so that is the first one. Number two is holy basil or tulsi. I actually have a holy basil tea right now. It's 
really good. I put gelatin in it. Um, so holy basil tea, it's called Tulsi, is another great option that really helps to reduce the stress response in the body so your body's not pumping out cortisol like crazy when you're under stress. Um, because there is a difference between true genuine threat or stress and then just stress from everyday tasks. Two different responses. If there's a lion running after, after you, you need the adrenals and all that adrenaline and all that function to happen in the body so you can escape as fast as possible. But if you just have a lot of tasks that are weighing on you and making you anxious, that's not true stress in the sense that you need all of this cortisol production. You don't, but your body doesn't differentiate between the two. So stress is stress, stress is that fight or flight response, and your body will produce the same amount if you're being chased by a lion or if you're sitting at home on your couch answering emails. So what we need to do is get our body to just understand the difference and not react so crazy if we're just at home feeling stressed, but not actually under severe stress. So Tulsi is great for that, and Astragalus. Now, I personally take all three. I do ashwagandha supplement before bed as it helps me sleep as well. I do holy basil tea, and I will do Astragalus tea and or tincture. So I get all three in, ideally every day, sometimes I'll miss and just get one, but they work the best for me because I run two businesses. I have three kids that I homeschool. They're at home 24 seven um, and we have a house to run and all of my social media. So I am under a lot of stress. And if I don't be careful and take adaptogens, my adrenals will go out of control and I start to feel fatigued. A couple things to help with fatigue, ginger and Panax ginseng. Those are the top two supplements that you can take to support your adrenals to give you that energy without raising cortisol to just give you the energy that it needs to function. So ginger and Panax ginseng and vitamin C as well is a good option. Now in terms of just overall support for the adrenals, anti-inflammatory action and adaptogenic action, I highly suggest medicinal mushrooms. My favorite are chaga and reishi and lion's mane. I like to do a combination. You can buy a mixed powder and put it in a smoothie, which is what we do. You can get it in capsule form. So whatever works for you, you can even do teas, medicinal mushroom teas. And I uh, really, really like curcumin. So curcumin is a great anti-inflammatory adrenal supporting herb. It should not be over consumed and it should not be taken during times of illness. Um, or during times of healing, like if your body's healing a wound or a, a broken leg or after surgery, but it is a beautiful anti-inflammatory to take to support your adrenals um, when it's taken properly. So to recap, adaptogens to manage the stress response, because again, there's a difference between being chased by a lion or just being over, being stressed by the amount of emails you have. One is life-threatening, one isn't, but your body reacts the same. So to adapt the way your body reacts, I like to take ashwagandha, astragalus, and holy basil or tulsi. For energy to support my adrenal function, especially when you have adrenal fatigue, when your adrenals are exhausted after pumping up cortisol for years of chronic stress, I like to do ginger and panax ginseng. And then for anti-inflammatory and immune support, but also for adrenal adaptogenic function, I like to do medicinal mushrooms and curcumin. So these are my recommendations. You can take you know, one from each of the categories, one adaptogen, one fatigue, want something for fatigue and something for immune support, or you can take everything I listed, whatever you feel you need. You can always work with a practitioner. I advise that before taking any supplements, but these are what work. And if you're doing this consistently while managing your stress and leading a stress-free lifestyle as you possibly can, and pairing that with a good anti-inflammatory diet, your adrenals will get back on track, they will recuperate, and your cortisol levels will balance, and they will start to work properly, which means your anti-inflammatory actions in the body will start to work properly. That is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like the video, share it on your social media, and follow me on Instagram at Marla's Healthy Life for content every single day and lots of great recipes and health tips. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.